afternoon session. And our first talk will be again by Fern, and we ask Fern to uh, give an overview for the volunteer and give us more. Okay, so um, thank you, and also all the conveners for this week. And uh, um, last time I was here, it's like 2010, the energy program, I, I talked about this actually. And the title of my talk is probably in the weather winning ground solution at EFC. And uh, I, I, I think it's fair to say that since then there has been quite a progress. And uh, I don't think I can cover everything, but there will be an additional two weeks program uh, for some experts and many of the topics will be covered there. Uh, and but I, I just want to emphasize a couple of things that uh, uh, the and the I mean since we are talking about TMD, I think that the TMD is really a nice thing about it. And first of all, it's a, uh, there's always a universality and. Uh, and also, in a sense, in the universal, uh, we are talking about TMD and DS very end. And for the small activities, you also talk about TMD. They call sometimes called un un unintegrated ground description, EAPA or AA. Uh, and, and more important, I think there's a uh, associated QCD dynamics associated with uh, TMDs, uh, the matter where you are, and small activities. Include evolution impact and TMD evolution and small activities. So I, I, I think um, <clears throat> I, I, I was happy that uh, in the last uh, 10 years or so there has been a lot of progress, but at the same time I feel a little bit uh, uh, frustrated because even recently I talked to my Ion colleagues, for example, and say I once studied the saturation physics. Uh, in how process for you then the loop zone product. He was surprised because he said, well, how can you have saturation scale 10 PV? I, I, I told to him that actually you are not using the hard scale to probe saturation, but actually you use the actual moment of the hard process to probe the SMR physics. I mean, of course, there's the addition that I'm the sort of talking about that I will talk about. But, but somehow the hair is that sometimes still have conceptual misunderstanding about saturation physics and how the TMD actually proves this saturation physics uh, in a casual room description instead of a really inclusive uh, process. Uh, <coughs> I won't talk about everything on this list. I just need some of the uh, recent developments in the small X TMDs. And in particular, uh, I think uh, in, in two weeks of the smart physics, many of this, I think, will be have detailed discussion. Uh, but I just want to really emphasize really TMD really come and um, play a very important role when people study small X physics. In particular, for example, this very beautiful paper by, uh, by uh, Jen Doe, Daniel Bohr, and uh, Ben Motors and others. So let's try to find the spin dependent. Uh, the spin dependent all around. And uh, more recently, uh, Yuri and Daniel and, uh, and Matt really tried to run small X behavior for different TMDs, for example. They have the correlate party spin, correlate ground distribution, and the transverse distribution, for example. It actually was mentioned this morning. And so it's, it's beautiful things actually happening but to understand TMD and small X. And uh, also, Andrea and uh, uh, Ian Bariski uh, uh, really start very nice program trying to understand power correction in the TMD framework. And uh, he's going to talk about the more detail tomorrow. And um, I, I cannot really go through all that, but I, one thing I really want to emphasize uh, in, during the rest of my talk is really something connecting Connecting TMD and small X physics is really sort of a resummation, uh, sort of uh, evolution, TMD evolution and small X evolution. Uh, we can have actually the same framework and we can study uh, many, many physics for the, for the small X physics. So, uh, so we only have like a half hour or so. So I'll give some introduction about TMD and small X. And then I will directly go to the pseudocode the summation and how we actually, uh, uh, now we can talk about TMD as small. I feel more comfortable 
now talking about TMS Moex until 10 years ago uh, when we first have, have thought about this. So I always start, like to start with the very, very, uh, beginning pay, beginning of the, uh, of the discussion, so that's back to uh, according to Super 1981. So when they go down the ground distribution, they define the ground distribution uh, in this massive segment. And of course, we, we know now that uh, if you want to really start TMD, you have to uh, include the gauging in the contribution for, 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 the, for, the, for the parent distribution and so on. But one thing I want to emphasize, in their definition, they use the field strength tensor of F, F cross I, F cross I, in the adjoint representation, and they have gauging also in that uh, representation. So it's very important because in this, uh, in this definition, you can choose a Nikon gauge, for example, with certain boundary condition that you can get with all the gauging contributions. And then the TMD ground screen just uh, puts that bar, oh, not just F plus I, F plus I. So in a sense, actually, you can write down the TMD ground screen in terms of the three function score of your, of your nucleon or nucleus. So that's exactly what, uh, what happened when, when Nari and Raju calculated the ground distribution for large nucleus. And starting with wave function of the nucleus, the calculated ground density, they got like TMD ground descriptions. And Yuri and I also uh, did the same thing. And that set tells you that for the TMD ground distribution, there's one particular class of the ground distribution is called by the wind and ground distribution distribution which have actually density interpretation. So we if we have we know that we function the new on new place, we can actually can calculate the TMD ground distribution for this one. And this is just say uh, repeat what I just say that you can start with classical young mirror theory and calculate this ground number density. And of course we can also start with the TMD definition even by quantum super like maybe one we take into a final state intact in fact we will be able to do the same thing, we get the same answer. So in a sense, what has been talking about, uh, uh, talked about the, the so-called weather winning ground scrutiny in small X community is actually the TMD ground scrutiny defined by Connick Super in 1981. The beautiful of the beautiful thing of the TMD ground scrutiny that small X is that, so this, uh, this is one product I, I, I took from the ESC white paper. So if you look at the ground distribution and function change for the momenta, here is a KT times the, the TMD ground distribution. You find that at a small x, you have this intrinsic scale, it's called saturated scale. So the KT distribution actually will be picked around the saturated scale. And of course, at large change for the momenta, you have very famous, uh, well-known part behavior on paper behavior. And the small x and large real play, you actually push the distribution to the, to the perturbative region. So as smaller x, you actually, the forefront actually goes this way, with large nuclei also goes this way. So in a sense, in particular x region or large nucleus, your saturation scale in the perturbative region, then most of your ground distribution actually you can know, you can calculate from the perturbative QCD. So that's also part of, part of the reason why we actually driven by the so-called DK. I have a question with slide 73. Sure. What is S-curve in that one? S-curve. S-curve, oh, that's the area, transfer of the area, I'm sorry. It's uh, always, you know, in this kind of area, blue and TMD for transverse area. Um, this is, has been averaged out of the transverse area. So it's basically, if you write down really weak and description, you have the additional e probe integral. So that integral has to be average out, so you just left with the transpose area. Sorry about that. And then on page 8, that your vertical axis, which KT times, KT times the TMD. Okay. Yeah. So that's where you can uh, kind of visibly see the separation scale, the current scale is really big at the separation scale. Uh, uh-huh. Again, to this. So the way you write the low uh, <coughs> KT region seems to indicate that you believe it is not linear, but even uh, quadratic, or it's just a, a, a 
Yeah, which part? Which, which region? This region? Very small, very small region. This one? No, this is a Christian mount, so nobody knows. So uh, back in 2010 and 2011, we, we actually have shown that uh, the DNS, in particular, we were particularly interesting for the ESC. Uh, if you try to looking for two hydron, two jet, and, and both of them uh, have not transferred the momentum, but the proposal transfer momentum is much smaller than the individual transfer momentum. So this process actually can be used to probe this uh, weather gradient ground description. In particular, the change for the total change for the momentum description of the digest system directly linked to the to the change for the momentum and ground strip and small x. So I think that's part of the reason why this actually generated a lot of interest in the community because it's from the process you can have detailed study uh, for the for the separation physics and so on. So <laughs> sorry, that's a that's an introduction. Well, when you say that the agent contribution of these orders, it's about what you're including and not including in the gluon distribution. Oh, that's because then. Uh, Sorry, I, I didn't look at it carefully when I wrote this slides because this is the leading on the picture. Uh, the following slides should have you tells you that we need to include the balance impact and this was goes to the balance impact and because the beginning is the same as the defined with the So I, yeah, this, I thought this is actually with, <laughs> okay. Sorry, so I didn't correct that. So. In the, in the previous talk, I also started with leading order picture and then had an additional drawing change with that end of the beginning. So that's the kind of introduction for this. And there's an as the con conceptual problem, I mean, is there something like a nuclear Sievers function, for example? You're always looking at the unpolarized. Yep. But there are more. So, uh, for nucleus, I am not so sure because the spin of nucleus is a very complicated object to write. I mean, if you talk about light nuclear, maybe it's I'm asking ask you. I mean, <laughs> so, so, so there's a no problem with a complicated wave function. The nucleus is a complicated wave function. <laughs> I, I actually I don't know. I mean, this is uh, very interesting question. And um, um, some of my Iran colleagues also asked me this question. I mean, it's, for example, if you have high spin state for the nucleus, what the spin effect would be? No, if you have to look at the line, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah so, so it's very common. And I haven't really thought about this in, in detail. And part of it, I think this one I mentioned about the spin the owner, I actually talked about this, but they also limited themselves to the proton instead of really talk about having new things. I think that's a very interesting question. In particular, I don't know if you can really follow it in the experiment. <coughs> experiments. Yeah. Well, now you play with that, maybe we can start. Yeah. Maybe I can comment. You can formally define the TMD distribution of Sivers function. Mm -hmm. The question is uh, the size. Uh, for the nucleus, only balanced nuclear are polarized. Most of them are still just cancel each other. That's true. Yeah. So, but for the heavy nucleus, you have sort of high spin state, the yeah, strip. Uh, uh, you can only define from the operator, the same operator, the same to the yeah, I, I was thinking about this discussion about the most vertical width or so on. <laughs> <laughs> so does it mean that it's all polarized and that we have enormous That's a That's true. That's that's very very interesting question. I think. Yeah. Okay, maybe we should, we we will have that. Talk in maybe a couple of years. So, <laughs> so in, 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 in the following, I just uh, that's really kind of an introduction about why we are interested in what we are interested in small x TMDs. And uh, in the following, I just really give you a kind of uh, overview of a discussion about evolution effect, in particular for TMD uh, evolution, how we actually encoded in the TMD, power restricting that small x. 
uh, uh, this uh, has been number of development, including uh, Android and Yan and also Genzo on this. So in the high scaling, suppose I have two particles scaling each other, and the, uh, the, the very high energy is always done by the so-called T-channel background. So you have T-channel ground radiation. And uh, 1970s, when BFK wrote down the BFK routine, Actually, they're talking about the kind of multiple ground radiation in the T-channel, uh, associated with T-channel grounds. So when they wrote down the BFKO, it's basically they use this so-called unintuitive ground description language, although they didn't call it, but later figured out that it's actually this so-called unintuitive ground description. What they, they are, are the evolution or resummation is basically say that all the ground radiation at the same order of transfer of the moment, uh, but the non moment movement uh, actually have hierarchies. For example, they always go to uh, smaller and smaller X wing go to the, the upper part. You can go to the other way around from, from upper to the down. So. And, uh, and that is actually what has been discussed extensively and uh, there's tons of the literature on this small X physics. And then when you have high energy, and then you, you have to include not only linear terms, but also have nonlinear terms. And that's the so called the BK or GMOC BK evolution equation. And the linear term is basically splitting, and the nonlinear term is recombination for the, for the, for the TMDs at small X uh, respect, uh, respect to the energy evolution. So, uh, of course, you can also ask us a question, when I have the hard process, for example, uh, uh, we have additional hard scale in your problem, and then you still restrict yourself in the small x region, and then you could still have this uh, uh, small x evolution or small x summation, but uh, here you have hard process. When we talk about hard process, we mean the concept of potential momentum hard description. So in the sense with some all the transform moment information from this uh, ladder diagram and into the hard process. That's the exact what we, we are trying to do uh, like uh, 80 years ago. And when you try to understand the evolution or soft ground radiation, you are conserving the diagram also. You have soft ground radiation for event from incoming particle and outgoing particle and also T channel grounds. So this soft ground radiation will contribute to the TMD evolution, TMD summation, uh, which also uh, we call the pseudocouple resummation. Again, so you have both resummation. Why is the hierarchy in the non moment fraction that give you BFKL? Why is the hierarchy in the transform moment plan that give you so-called pseudocouple evolution? So how we get this to consistent? So we took the uh, earlier time, we took the simple example, although in reality, actually this doesn't have much to say with small x physics, but we took this simple example because we can calculate it uh, very nicely. So basically Higgs particle production in PA collision. Uh, without doubt, you know that leading order ground, leading order differential cross section depends on so-called weather William ground distribution. It's the same uh, ground distribution was defined in 1981 by Colin Super, and also the same ground distribution calculated by Larry McLaren, Roger Gunagapa in the CDC picture. This is a leading order picture. And then you can go ahead to do the next linear you know, calculation, and then you find larger organs. And then larger organs can be raised on in terms of the in terms of cough effects. So in the end, you find that uh, your differential cross section. Uh, with the pseudocop or TMD evolution can be written into the hard part, which really depends on how scale RFIS was uh, large uh, uh, transform moment of jet production or Higgs particle production. And then you have this pseudocop factor, and the, the convolute with the, with the small X TMD ground distribution without, our TMD, uh, without pseudocop effect. So in a sense, if we study any hard process, uh, which have hard moment scale here is you know, not jet production, for example, that you have hard factor, which is just probability correction, and additional pseudo-covery summation effect, we know how to calculate that. And then from this differential question, we'll be able to study the, uh, the truly uh, uh, non probability of uh, or CGC prediction for the, uh, for the TMD ground description. 
either without William Bond's version or, or Dr. Bond's version. So I'll give, uh, give you some kind of argument why this, this actually is true, and also give you some example how this calculation can be done uh, in for the value calculation. So here is the argument how we do this calculation and calculation. So we, we and this, this is what we propose to do. So we always start with factorize the TMDs. So when you have hard process, you try to factorize the process in terms of the TMDs. I mean, this TMD is really defined as what Connie Super wrote down many years ago. And then you can calculate higher order corrections uh, in dipole formula, for example. This proper subtraction, we know TMD definition has an icon singularity, so you have to subtract a singularity there. <laughs> Then you can solve the TMD evolution, which will have BK a, a evolution as well okay, when you do the calculation. So why we can separate these two different evolution effects? I mean, this is a little bit technical, but I, I hope you can. Excuse me. Let me go back. So now we do the repeats of dipole. Oh no, I say the dipole formula. Yes. Yes. But previously it was widespread. What? So there could be the dipole of so, causal pole, so uh, no. But it is still by the uh, so so if you start Higgs particle production, that's why the William works. But if you study other hard process, you have that of one solution. So, but, but I, I mean, this is a generic, thank you, the generic argument of what we are doing. Okay. So we will start with the hard process, the TMD factor. We write down TMD definition, literally from Connie Super, and then we calculate that in a small area. And you find that in there, you have Nikon singularity, we know that, you are doing TMD, and then also you have small divergence. So you can both again see that happen. I will show you some diagram later on. And then you do with some engine on, on top of that. So uh, one slide argue why this could work, because they, they are in totally different kinematics, at least in the leading logarithm limit. So uh, suppose we are trying to calculate radiated ground, ground contribution to your partner's version or cross section. You find that you can always decompose into a sort of, sort of decomposition, uh, which carry momentum fraction around one moment, uh, another moment, uh, and transfer of moment. Uh, sort of wrong is actually the sort of contribution or TMD evolution, always coming from alpha, beta in the same order, but a much smaller one. And the collinear ground is alpha in the order of one, but the beta much, much smaller. So here's a very interesting limit. There's a so called small x collinear ground. So that's actually not only just uh, alpha is small, but actually it's one minus beta also much smaller than one. So that means alpha actually goes zero. So sometimes I'm, uh, at the beginning, I was also confused. I mean, small x which we try to talk about soft ground, what's the difference? So actually they, they have a particular kinematics that this actually alpha goes zero, which is called the ability of equations. So you have two, different kinematics, that's why you can, you can resum uh, 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 differently, but still consistently. So, uh, like I said, so we write down TMD, so this is just like uh, what Colin Super wrote right down in 1981, and then you have to subtract the, the subtract the Nikon singularity, that's how you do, do the TMD part of the distribution, and then this will be unsubtracted part of the ground distribution. And this definition could be whether we need ground distribution or dark ground distribution, depending on how you arrange the worst or not. And the subtraction of the endpoint singularity will give you uh, the corner super evolution equation for TMDs. So, so I, I'm sure the, the <clears throat> subtraction uh, procedure does not depend on whether it is WW or dark it's the same, the soft part yes. is the same. Yes, yes. So the TMD evolution actually followed Collins in 2011 because we used the, his actually definition of subtraction. 
only difference uh, is that the beta zero term is actually missing for good reason. Uh, I don't want to go into detail there. And then small x evolution, you can write, find that actually this also follow up from what you define in the team of current inspiration and current inspiration dipole will be like BK and whether William Gordon Stephen will or BK have different evolution equation. So in the end, when you when you, when you try to solve the evolution equation and put everything together, so TMD ground distribution for any hard process you want a small x physics, depends on x, depends on transversal momenta, again, depends on factorization scale or uh, a cutoff for the for Nikon singularity. And then you, you resum it, and then you have Sudakov resummation, which is basically coming from TMD evolution. And this is a probability part, only depends on RFS of the half scale. And this one is really true TMD ground distribution and small x, which obeys the small x evolution. Could it be that? That whole ground distribution could be one the William ground distribution, depends on the x, of course. So this is the sum of the diagrams. I don't want to show you go to much detail, but we calculate the one loop correction. And again, you depends on gauging, right? But the Nikon singularity then depends on gauging direction. So that's, that's what you, you, you'll get when you put it out. Okay, so last a couple of slides, I really want to generate some more interesting on this discussion, uh, is the team part distribution. Um, in the small X community, they always talk about ground distribution. So, but the quark distribution actually also can be calculated in this framework. Nari and Rajiv did this calculation, I also calculated this before, and we, we kind of tried to reproduce, uh, reproduce what they, they repeat what they calculated, and then we found the similar result. So, anyway, TMD quark distribution and small x can be calculated in the CDC as well. And then that's what, what they found. So, this one, the Kazoo produces broad, he's not post and JAM. And you can find that here I actually brought like TMD familiar language. So this is Fourier transfer in, in the Fourier transfer space with respect to the transfer of the momenta uh, as a function of D, D probably is Fourier transfer with respect to transfer of the momenta. So you can say that there's a different curve uh, tells you different X-ray. So the uh, X tend to minus two, tend to minus three, tend to minus four. So dash curve is for the, for the simple GBW model. Solid curve is actually have RB uh, running copy BK evolution e equation there. Like I said, because once you have this framework, you can calculate the human parts. And of course, the, the very interesting thing is how we actually compare to the data, right? And before that, actually, I want to show you that what the TMD looks like in the collinear picture. So I took it from our recent fit for JIA, Teratron, Cities, and so on. That's a comparison. So this is the CDC calculation for the TMD in the B space. This again is kind of quote unquote, we know TMD in this particular x ring The problem for us is that in this fit, at least for this fit, I don't know, other people may have different answer, uh, in this phase, we don't have strong X dependence for the TMDs. So the X dependence really coming from ground contribution by different X, because in the collinear factorization, you have a ground contribution to the TMD part of the And you can see they actually have totally different behavior, right? They're totally different behavior. And the part of the reason, I think, is that we don't have much data on the small X process, or hard process, again, or, or any other serious process. I think that in 2014, it didn't include the LHC data. We didn't include the LHC data in the fit, but yeah. we compared to the LHC data later. The agreement. So the curve that you show there are... Uh, this is small effect? Yeah. So, oh, that's interesting. LHC is much more sensitive. No, no, they, 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 okay. Maybe, maybe we can have more detailed discussion. The, the point is the following. So when you have high mass like Z boson, they dominated by the probability contribution. So they are not much sensitive to small X. 
So if you found a different, that would be very interesting. But what we, in particular, what we found is that if you, 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 you are not sensitive. Uh, we compute the CMS and also we compute Atlas data with legal oh, sound. Well, there are many things. Probably this comparison is. Uh, should, should give you an idea, but it should not be taken as a proof. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, 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 no errors. Yeah, the way, yeah. The way you implement the evolution can affect the result. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like I said, for example, this is actually why the X depends coming from. It's yeah. coming from ground distribution transformation. So, because you, you have this uh, addition scale there. So, uh, so, if you go to the, the region, a small b should be pretty well constrained, as you say, by the activity. Uh, yes. Yes, but that depends on your normalization. But so I think I don't have much time. Anyway, so you, even if you change the fit, you could probably cannot change very much. There's more B, uh, B I guess. You don't. Actually, that's a very good point. I mean, we, we're st I'm still trying to find what's the best way to go forward. I mean, how you, uh, so, uh, so in this sense, I, I very, very much like what uh, Ron Duke did a couple of years ago for the ground switch. They constrain the TMD ground screen by, by a match to the portability of communal calculator. I think that's the, exactly along your point. Basically, a small b, I shouldn't be dependent on whatever small aspect is. So the communal ground screen. So that's, that's definitely very important. But, but we, we still have, I mean, the <coughs> motivation to go forward is that we, we hope we have data, right? So at the beginning, I saw this data. I talked to a couple of people here now, actually in the last couple of days. I say this Julian data from Philip. It's very tough to measurement. And I'm very happy actually exactly how they pull out this measurement. I don't want to go to detail, but it's very tough to measurement. And uh, this is a PD distribution for Julian in the mass range, like uh, 4.8 to the A. Do we really they can match? We are really interested. And if you, if you just plug in the rapidity, you say that's exactly in this small activity. I was very excited. I mean, I really want to say what TMD is looks like. But in the end, if I plug in my num a curve, and you couldn't say anything. If you don't have uh, any theoretical guidance, you couldn't say that there may be some kind of interesting behavior here, right? But because uncertainty is so large, so you cannot really draw any conclusion, so I just, but I'm putting my curve there, it's consistent with what we have. So I, I think the, the conclusion that we need more data as well. I'm, I'm very happy and Christian told me that the RCB is really planning to do for JM, for example. I also really emphasize oops wrong. It's very important for the ground description. I mean, if you can do PP, that's nice. And PA, even better. I mean, of course, we have the ESC that will tremendous data on cities and also that has on production. I just want to show you one plot which is coming from uh, Bowen and Eka and other states that uh, when they include the Slakov effect and then this really have very solid calculation for the dihydron correlation for that. And uh, maybe just skip into the, if you want to know the detail, ask me later on. Uh, skip this part. So I think uh, in the in the last uh, ten years or so, the theory development really provides solid ground to start the TMD that is more X. Uh, we only thing we need is not we need more data. Thank you. Understand if I got the message. So you say that if uh, I, uh, I study the team is a low X, mm -hmm. the formula is that is telling me something about the behavior of this team is a low X. Yes. And I should be able to, so the, the challenge is to show that uh, data can distinguish between the behavior without the low X effect and the behavior with uh, yes. the low X effect. Yes. But I, uh, it's not yet clear to me exactly where 
in, in idea is, so suppose you had an idea of machine legs and so on, what exactly what you should look for? It's not clear to me what is the signature of this difference. So let me let me let me let me tell uh, let me put it this way. So if you have data like this, right? So suppose I have a very small error bar. So by factor of two or three. So the data actually tells you a lot of the information. So for example, you have PD barometer. So you have more broad description and of potential moments compared to your community coverage. So that means you have to take into account small X effects because small X evolution gives you more broad as a separation, basic idea of separation. But I mean, but if I put in a model, a parameterization for a DMD with a broadening of X, this will be able to fit the data. So yeah, that's right. So that's model, right? But the beauty of the small X is that actually they can calculate this. In particular, they can calculate the X dependence. So once they have initial condition, for example, 10 to minus 2, they can predict the 10 to minus 3, 10 to minus 4, you know, uh, that's the beauty, right? So this is just initial condition if you take a B, uh, GBW. Rest is really coming from PK evolution. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, if you really do a phenomenology, you, you, you end up, uh, you have to compute tons of the data, and then you have, really have to have systematic about everything. But the idea is this. So you have CDC, and then you can pick small X behavior of all the TMDs, and pop that in a sort of everything that control. Okay, so, so in the long run, let's say we can build the parameterization of the, uh, sorry, uh, build of the parameterization of the TMD with the input from the LOS or without the input. With, see if with or without. Respect to mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the CDC or BK evolution really is the prediction power. So the, if it works as it proposed, so we shouldn't be able to know the small x behavior of Right. Of course, we might need. So, <clears throat> of course, in, in this, the devil could also be in the detail in some sense, right? Because you have E, you know, uh, comes from, so you would have to have uh, a prescription or something of sort. It would still be complicated, I guess, to um, yeah. have really solid predictions that would yes. be distinguishable from, from that's, that's true. That's true. That's true, in particular for the number of your Right, exactly, exactly. I, I guess that's part of the reason we still uh, try to find a way to uh -huh. go forward. No, <laughs> right. no I, mean, I, I mean, if the data, if the, the training experience data is like a uh, factor three better, I will, I will definitely just spend my time and try to understand yeah, that. Yeah. I have more stronger motivation. Right, right. and technically, just more question I had. At some point you mentioned that uh, Beta no terms that you wouldn't reproduce. Does that mean that your single couple exponent is different? Does it have no running coupling, or what's the. <laughs> okay. The beta zero term is, is I, I, I mentioned that, is not there for good reason. Mm -hmm. the, the reason is for So, no beta zero is, uh, is associated with anonymous dimension. Anonymous dimension is coming from UV behavior. But the, the small x TMD doesn't have you with it. So they yeah, yeah, are rigid. So there's a, that's for the good reason. Okay. Um, so can you repair that or can you make sure that the two level runs in the <laughs> That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. So, so far, I, I, I didn't read the, in detail about mm -hmm. Denzel's recent paper. Mm -hmm. He claimed that we could actually go beyond leading down the line. Okay. So, so far we are trying to say that in the leading double log, everything is consistent. Okay. Fortunately, yeah. there is okay. some <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And the question, oh yeah, first thing I should say that for um, Let me, uh, let me check if I understand things correctly. Sure. <laughs> so what you're doing is the first population of DMD and then yes. trying to respond to This is different from what standard is that I should do. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, same definition of virtual lines is different from case cases with the cannabis. Yes. yes. So, so, in some sense, this is the original with respect to the yes. yes. standard. Uh, yeah, we, we have yeah, thought so about how to do this, but this yeah. is the part we, we took. Okay. 
So because we know the TMD, at least I know the TMD very well. So I mean, on top of that, that's not. So uh, when you resum is more as I think because you do not generate the error of the just some effector and you have a kind of multiplication factor. Say I'm thinking for it, say that uh, I have this in mind, probably this can help. So I think it's a normal, for example, which you have a error of the radius, or if I have a normal electron dependent on X. And uh, uh, so, uh, can you recover this number of operators with a small like summation or is something like that? Uh, uh, in the CGC, the, the formula is that uh, if you really restrict the small x region, right? In the CGC framework, they, they contain all trace expansion when you try to. Uh, summarize when you do the evolution for the, for the small x bar. So for that, uh, I think uh, the, 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 the effects should be taken care of for the small x bar. Yeah. And if you, so, okay. So, so the argument is for this. When you try to calculate TMD in the small x region, you take a small x approximation. You basically get all higher corrections with respect to small x leading contribution. By doing that, of course, you cannot really go back to the larger x. That's part of the reason why you actually, they, I mean, there's many reasons why that couldn't go. So, I mean, they, they, they. but in the CDC, they are supposed to do what they are supposed to do. So, they resum all the norms of the local Rx. And in that approximation, they have all power of version nines. For example, they have all trace contributions for the TMD uh, for the ground speed. But they always like they have higher power in smart. That's part of it. And if you want to bring back this uh, uh, X suppression, it's very tricky. And you should talk about that I was trying to do. And you really caught people recently doing that's basically. They're trying to bring the, the higher uh, correction in the smart approximation. It's very hard. So what we're trying to do here is to assess uh, small x in the area to be not proportional to the one. Yeah. And this is all we want to do here. This guy's not the classic class and the year. Yeah, I also have a rather simple question. Mm -hmm. If you had like 10 times better precision per yen data. <laughs> Could you then determine the saturation scale US or? <laughs> That's a very good question. I mean, I would not to dive into you who really have been. And that, like I said, is if we have strong motivation, I would much bigger to do that. <laughs> but I don't know. It's like, uh, I mean, when, I mean, the reality is not that beautiful as you thought sometimes. So you have to train it a bit in here and there. Maybe you don't have a really clear picture. You know, yeah. also you don't know how sensitive my results are. To this. I mean, no, somewhere it must be in there. It must be there, but it's just I, I don't know right now. Yeah. I mean, we don't have data. I mean, if we have some data, that's what it tells us. It's just don't. Yeah. Okay. In that context, would Phoenix even be the right place to look? I mean, it's going to I try, you know, I, I have some yeah, RCD yeah. when I really try to convince them to do this. And, uh, well, actually, unfortunately, I, I spent six years trying to convince several different RCD yeah. yeah. to do some, a number of QCD measurements. Yeah. And after six and years, the experiment. <laughs> they have data. Yeah. They have 20 degrees very end there. It's very small, I remember, for the inclusiveness. Yeah. So you just have to look into the printer. Oh yeah. In your time. <laughs> oh yeah. In particular, if you have PA, that's even better, right? Sorry. Uh, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And that's time for again.